Hey guys, James here today and welcome back to another Sims 4 building video. Today we are doing the floor plan and layout to this awesome, like, realistic mansion home. If you haven't seen the previous videos on this, we built the exterior, so if you want to see how we did all the outside, all the landscaping, make sure to check out that video. But today we're going to be looking at the floor plan and the layout. So this is something that I wanted to get absolutely right because it has to be good for the gameplay and it has to be good for, you know, just looking good as well, looking realistic in a way. So what I mean for like gameplay is that a lot of houses that you can end up building do get a little annoying in live mode. And I'm definitely guilty of this. And I've done this at a lot of houses in the, in the fact that sometimes, especially multi-level houses can be annoying if things are really far away or if it just doesn't doesn't make sense or it doesn't flow or if you do like a lot of large items in a in a lot of the like wrong spaces so with this uh because it is it's supposed to be a mansion obviously it's not that big of a home but for the setting it is still it would still be considered a mansion because they're in like the sort of countryside it's a very large sprawling home it is like a family estate so you can see from the front to the back there at the back where we have the conservatory where it's really really bright at the back door just there uh we have the front door when you open the front door you see all the way through to the back of the house you see all the Light, so it creates this really big open space, which I think is really important. Where it's still like an enclosed area, and that we're still separating it out from everything else. Uh, right here on the right-hand side where I'm just highlighting, that is going to be like the living area. And that is going to be one big room. Like, it's huge. It is a really big living area, but it is going to be the family living area. So it's going to have like the TV, the fireplace. It's going to have like a piano in there. There's like, going to be a whole bunch of stuff in there. But then we do have this huge sort of foyer. And with a huge house and a huge foyer, or uh, we got to make it feel pretty grand as well. So we don't want to just do a small staircase. Uh, now... The reason I know a lot of you, not a lot of people, a few people do point out, say, like, oh, the staircase should be in the middle. So you like walk in the door, you have the staircase there. It's quite grand. While sometimes I think that is great to do. I think in this particular house, uh, when you open the door, like I said, I want you to be able to see all the way through to the back. So it creates this sort of continual uh, sort of uh, sight line and also makes the place feel a lot bigger if you can see to the back of the house. Uh, and especially if you experience this in real life, if you go into a house that you can see all the way through, it feels a lot bigger. It feels a lot lighter as well. And so putting the stairs up to the side, keeps that sight line but we still got large like double double wide stairs here to work with so they still feel very spacious but it's just uh it keeps that downstairs area a little bit more open a little bit easier to work with now we also you can see we had the issue with the roof uh trimming coming through because we were trying to do an open little balcony area uh, to the to the downstairs. So we have this really nice big open landing area, which is a two-story sort of spanning uh, area, which would look really nice and really make the upstairs feel a lot bigger as well. Now, the issue with this, and, uh, and this happens a lot. So if you ever complete a room with fences, uh, where by that I mean like normally one room would be four walls or you know any number of walls completing it but if you complete part of it with a fence it actually causes the roofs to sort of render inside which is just a bug that's been in the game since day one uh, for whatever reason so the way you can fix that is especially now they added more roof control so you can actually reduce the size of the eaves and that's what i'm doing here so you can see the, the i actually reduced the eaves uh which is a little roof adjustments and if you press shift c i think you can get more roof controls but the, the next problem i had was i actually had the roof trim coming in like the the sort of outline around it so i had to choose a smaller roof trim that actually fit a little bit better around so it didn't clip through the walls and so that's what i'm doing now so i'm just playing around with that trying to get to work because i was really happy with how the layout was working except that that um the roof was sort of coming through so i was trying to make the front work here a little bit and a few people were saying how uh and i mentioned the, i mentioned i replied to a bunch of comments on that video uh on one of the previous videos of this house was about the entrance being really understated and they felt it should be more grand and all that and while i totally understand that this whole house the, the facade was based off of an image and that's exactly what it looks like and i think it's quite good i think for the family that this house is for as well they are a very like understated kind of family like they're how they're not really about being loud and showy they are weird and they are quirky but i don't think that translates into this big flashy house i think it translates into a house that is a bit weird but not like in your face weird if that makes sense i don't know if that makes sense but that's how i see it and i think that's why i think the front uh, fits really well and it seems like it is such like this house is such an old sort of styled home as well but you can tell some of the layout would have been updated like some of the walls would have been uh, knocked down to create a more open space uh, so right now i'm putting in a couple of counters and this is something that i recommend you do as well if you struggle with floor plans if you're working on a floor plan and you don't know where stuff is going to fit or how it's going to fit if you just get a few items you can see the sort of 
of scale. So that area there, for example, is going to be my laundry. And this is a double car garage. Like this is obviously you can't really have garages, but we're going to be using it as one and decorating it as such. Uh, so that's going to be like the laundry. And then that little two by one room in the middle there is also just going to be a little uh, wash uh, closet, which is just going to have a toilet in it and like a little toilet roll and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I'm also just trying to figure out what kind of flooring I wanted to do throughout the house. I think it mostly ends up as floorboards, even upstairs, just because it looks so much better than the carpet in this game. Like, I think I kept trying to use the carpet and it just wasn't working. Now, I don't use that flooring, I don't think, because I was like, we already used that in the previous house, and I, I think I've overused that flooring too, and I don't think it, I don't even really think it fits this house that well, so I use a different one in the end, but uh, you can see how the layout's sort of coming together now. So we have the, the main foyer there, and then the area we're looking now with the smash through wall off to the left, which you can't see now, is going to be the kitchen. This area here is a little sunroom, which I also wanted to do a different flooring in, so it looks like it was added afterwards, which it totally was, and that's kind of the idea of it, that it was added afterwards, added onto the back of the house, right? Right there uh, so that's why it has a, a sort of lighter flooring and this is obviously a downstairs bathroom it's going to go right there and then across the other side of the hall is the the uh office now one big thing uh like i said about the layouts is normally i design the outside of the house first which i totally did in this case as well but because the exterior of the house is pretty simple mostly rectangular we're able to get a decent floor plan uh, but like I said, a big, big tip to making them work is to just actually place some items in. And I think once we move upstairs to the upstairs floor plan, uh, we check that out too. Like I put, I think I put a bathtub in just to see if it all fits. Uh, so now this is the living room and this is huge. So I was like, I didn't like, it's a really big room. That's why I was like, I was considering, I was like, maybe we can split it into smaller rooms. But the problem with doing that, if we did any smaller rooms, we'd have to extend the hallway further down. And we don't really, the problem is if you extend the hallway, then you take up more of the floor space into essentially useless space. So I decided to just leave it as one big room and then we can divide it up with furniture. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> that wallpaper I just placed looks terrible. Uh, but yeah, so that is going to end up being, like I said, it's going to be, I think it's going to be like a little bit of a reading area. There's going to be a kid's playroom area too in the living room. Cause we didn't, I was going to do like a playroom like we had in the last house, but we didn't actually have. I said we didn't have, oh, we didn't actually have any room. Like, obviously, this house is quite big and we could have made one of the rooms that. But like I said, we could have turned this into more rooms, but I just don't think it was going to work out that way. Um, but I just go for a basic, uh, <laughs> what are the wallpapers I'm doing right now? We just go for a basic sort of uh, wall finishing in this room. And then as, as, essentially, when, we, when I go back through the houses and I start doing all the wallpaper, uh, when, when I do each room, I sort of choose the color properly. For now, it's basically just a holding texture. Uh, so any like sort of walls or flooring that you see is probably likely to change in any of the rooms that we do. Like even this right now, I think I, I think I was trying to get this to work and I was like, oh, that'd be cool with the door at the front there. I'd have to lower the windows and I'm like, the windows look way too low and it looks kind of dumb. Like it looks good from the inside, I think, but I think outside it didn't look as good. I don't, I think I changed that. I was going to say, just like, do I leave it like that? I don't think so. Like we're still very early on in this build. Like there's so much furnishing to do that it's just not even possible to do this in one video. So that's why I sort of decided to split it up into the exterior. Then we're doing the floor plan and layout in this video. Then I'm going to try and do room builds and all the other, on all the other sections of the house, uh, which will be, yeah, so it'll be broken up into rooms, except for rooms like the bathrooms. I'll probably do one video that has all the bathrooms in it, for example, or something like that, uh, because I think that makes sense. And I think a lot of you guys are like, yeah, that works. And it means that we can sort of watch this back at a more reasonable pace, because if I did everything in one video, it'd have to be way fast and you wouldn't really be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, but thankfully a lot of this is sort of just, we've got most of the layout happening now. Uh, what I was trying to do here is get the wallpaper to match between the floors, which is really difficult because the lighting doesn't match. So you have to, you have to use a bit of your imagination because the color is exactly the same that I put in here. Uh, when I eventually choose it, the color is the same, even at the front, the front wall, that white upstairs and the white downstairs is the same color, but the lighting doesn't show it that way which is really annoying, but there's not much you can do about that. Uh, well, actually, there's nothing you can do about that, really, unless you flooded both areas with loads of lights, so it just got whitewashed out into the same color. But yeah, I did my best. So uh, like, I was just choosing the same blue here. Like, that's the same blue, but it looks completely different, which kind of sucks, but that's just the way it is. And I think we fine tune a little bit um, maybe later on, especially when we do a lot of furnishing and decorations, it starts looking a lot better. Um, but yeah, you can see the upstairs here. We've got the three bedrooms uh, here on the right. At the top is the bathroom, I think. Uh, yeah, on the left there's a bathroom now. 
And I was just trying to figure, again, trying to figure out a layout that worked here. That ended up working better because it meant we could get more even room sizes because I was trying to, we wanted them to be mostly even because they're for the kids. And then on the left hand side here, we have the master bedroom, which we can't see right now. The master bedroom, ensuite, and a walk in robe. Like they get this whole half of the house with a bunch of stuff in it. So that's the bathroom. And I was making sure that a bathtub actually fit in there because I really wanted it by the windows. I thought that'd be cool. Uh, but let's just go ahead and jump in the game and we'll quickly look at the floor plan and I'll talk through it without us zooming around all over the place. Okay, so this is what it looks like in the game at the moment. So we have, like I said, the front door here and essentially you get this really nice, like when you open the door, you walk through, let me just put all the walls up. You can see straight on through to the back and that's exactly what I was talking about. And it makes this whole sort of area here in the middle feel more open. Ignore that light floating there at the moment. Uh, also the walls are a bit different in this as well, but this is, we're just trying to talk about the layout here. So yeah, we have the, uh, the sort of sight line all the way through, which is exactly what I was talking about. So I'm really happy that that turned out the way it did. And I think the rest of the floor plan actually works really well. I think it flows really nicely because here will eventually be the dining room. Uh, as you can see by the test object placed in it, that will eventually be the dining room, which you can get to right away if you wanted to. Or you can walk around here to the kitchen area, which again is very open. It is very bright as well. It's got, it's got plenty of windows here at the back and it's sort of open to the whole sort of foyer of the house with the sun, uh, the sun room right there or the conservatory just over there. So it feels really, really bright. And I think it'll be a really nice hub for this house. And then yeah, so through here, straight from the kitchen as well, goes through the dining room, which also flows back around to the main entrance, which I think works really, really well. Then we have the sort of rear door here to get out the back so you don't have to walk through to the middle. You can get out the back just here, which also leads to the, the clothesline that we did in the last video just over there. And then that clothesline makes it really easy to get through uh, well, from that door through here to where the laundry will be, which will be the garage area just here. And the laundry will be just in that area. So I think that'll work really, really nicely in gameplay. So like what I was talking about with gameplay stuff, like, I mean, I could have had uh, the washing line there, but then had no door here. And then you'd have to walk all the way around, which would have sucked. So it's just, I think having that door there makes it so much more direct. Like you just go straight in, boom. And then over this way, like I said, we have, this is going to be a home office. So like just a computer, library kind of stuff. Got a, a like sort of downstairs family bathroom, which actually has its exterior window here looking into the sort of conservatory, which I think is kind of cool. It's kind of nice to have that there. It's a little bit different, or at least different from what I normally build. Then, like I said, we have the huge uh, family room just there. And I think this is going to be a really good downstairs area. Like, it, it should flow really, really well. Uh, there's no exit from the, the family room to the outside. I don't know how that will play. Like, I did look into putting a door here, but by the time I did that, I already had a lot of, like, foliage here. And I didn't think it was too big of a deal because if you're sitting there, you can just walk out here because most of the stuff that you're going to be interacting with is here or over this side. So you kind of have to walk this direction anyway. Uh, I mean, obviously there's a pool there, so you have to walk around. It's a little bit extra, but I don't think it's too bad. Like, I don't think it's too out of the way. Upstairs, I think upstairs worked out really well too. So we were able to keep the whole center of the house together well. Because you might have been able to tell in the exterior when we built this, there's like three different, well not three different, different brick colors. And uh, people suggested different ways that this could have happened. Because obviously in the house they based herself of, they did have the different brick colors. So they'll say, I can't remember exactly what, but different purposes that the houses were then joined together or the quarters were joined together. Anyway, so the point is, it was really nice to be able to keep this whole separate building here, like completely open. So it seems like when they sort of put it together, you could have like left this as one big open space. And it's, you know, it's separate. It also separates, I think, the whole parents retreat over this side. So this is all the parents stuff. So all, like master bedroom, walk-in robe, ensuite bathroom. I think that's going to be really, really cool. Then over this side, we have the family bathroom here. Uh, very big bathroom, obviously. And then we have the three bedrooms, which are mostly the same size. Like this is a four by four and has a built-in wardrobe. This is essentially a four by four, but then has like a sort of bay window area. This one's a little bit bigger. Obviously it's what, five by four and a bay window. So that's the biggest room, but there's not much I could do about that. If I move the wall over, then basically the room size is just swapped. So that's kind of how it worked out. Obviously there's one room that's a little bit bigger than the others, but that is the, the floor plan. And then obviously we have the workshop over here, which we haven't actually done yet, but this area will be a loft that will be open down to the workshop there but that is the layout uh, of this video so thank you so much for watching guys make sure to leave your comments suggestions and feedback down below uh, obviously not for this house this house is already done which you may have seen in the house tour a little while ago but for future videos and i hope you enjoyed this as well just like a little bit of a closer look and a bit more of a deep dive into the, how the layout actually came together uh, because I, I always find doing a layout can be one of the most challenging things. If you get the layout wrong, it makes furnishing really hard. But if the layout is just right, it can make the furnishing work really, really well. And I guess just on that note before I go, um, 
having this many doors in a room, you can see like we've got a, technically one door here, one here, one here, one here. We have four doors on all of the walls. That can sometimes be really challenging, but I think because we have three doors almost just all on one side, this essentially just becomes like a little hallway section, which I think is perfectly fine for something like a kitchen. Uh, but when you have, if you end up with too many doors in a room, it can be really hard to furnish. Whereas like, so that's why this living room is actually really good. Even though it's huge, it means we have, we can pretty much do anything with the space because there's no doors. Like there's no uh, way that seems they're going to be walking through trying to get to the other side. And even in here, not really, you're probably not going to be walking through this room a lot. Like if you're going outside, you'll probably just walk out this way. Or if you're coming inside, you'll just go in here or go in whichever door. So I think it should actually work out really well. We'll have to find out in the gameplay. But yeah, there, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. And have an awesome day.